Hello, I'm Anthony. I want to talk today about a subject that's really easy to sweep under the carpet because it's embarrassing to admit this stuff. I want to talk about what to do if you can't hear the changes you're making. It's quite common, particularly with um, compression, uh, to, a, to a lesser extent EQ, but primarily compression or limiting, where I'll put a plug in uh, on a track and AB them and I literally can't tell the difference between the two tracks. Now that could be because I've dialed extremely subtle changes in and any kind of visual inspection you make makes basically no difference. But sometimes I'll make a change that does have a visual impact and yet I simply can't tell the difference when I AB them at parity volume. This is absolutely critical. Very often you'll put, let's say compression you'll put on a track and if you don't verify that the output level is the same as the input level, you can quite easily convince yourself it sounds amazing simply because it's got louder. So you have to always do that due diligence check. But having done that, what happens if you still can't tell the difference? Well, in my opinion, you should take it out because you don't know if you're actually doing harm or good. I've been playing with this song. This is a song that I wrote a couple of years ago called Hummingbird. I've soloed the drum bus and I'm looping over a four bar section. It's actually hidden by my head. So as you can see, bar 29 to 33. And at the moment, there's nothing on the master bus itself. But I've got these two insight meters, which obviously at the moment are going to show identical outputs because there's nothing in between them. What I'm going to do is turn this compressor on. So this is the uh, Archuria VCA65, an implementation of a very famous piece of kit called the DBX165. And one of its common use cases is on the drum bus. But I'm going to turn it on and tell you in all honesty, I can't tell the difference between this on and off. And the way that I do this, because I'm going to run these tests in real time, is that I hover the mouse um, over the bypass um, section and then I have a trackball, which I can click on and off, and so I'm not in danger of accidentally moving my mouse. There's nothing worse than doing a blind test and your mouse moves slightly past uh, the button. So I use the trackball for this because it's a stable thing and I can press it on and off. So let's get the track going. So here's the compressor on at the moment. Now I'm gonna close my eyes so that I don't know whether or not it's on or off. Okay. So here we go. Do this test yourself if you want. Okay, I can't hear any difference between those two. Now here's a second effect that we've got on the same track. So this is the IK multimedia implementation of the LA2A. And again, I'm gonna get my bypass control set up. Now I'm gonna close my eyes again, set the song going. That sounds on and better. And that sounds off. So I think there's a noticeable difference. So thank goodness I was right. <laughs> um, there's a noticeable difference there. I can hear the sound improve. Now, I, it's the improvement that I'm identifying and I'm saying I prefer this sound and then I open my eyes on and I look at the effect. If the effect is on and I think it's better, then it's earned a place in the song. It's quite common for me to do exactly the same blind test and prefer the bypassed version. That's where you found yourself in a rabbit hole, uh, where you've ended up making all of these tweaks and you might spend 15 minutes tweaking this plugin and come to the conclusion that you've absolutely nailed it and that's the one. Do the blind test, find out if you can tell whether or not there's any improvement. And if you can't tell any change at all, or you prefer the bypassed version, what on earth are you doing? Now the one situation that I would say where this doesn't necessarily apply is if you're relying on the laws of physics. So if you do some 
low cut on a bass sound because you know that there's stuff going on below 30 hertz and you can't hear it. My ancient ears might not be good enough to hear stuff down there. Or similarly, in the very high frequency band, completely different scenario. Under those circumstances, absolutely take it away because you know you know that it's working. You know that that's going to have a cumulative effect on the, on the, the quality of the sound and you're throwing stuff away that you physically can't hear. That's different. What I'm talking about here is my ears not being finely tuned enough to hear these subtle changes that I'm making. I'm more than happy to put my hands up and say, ambition outstrips talent. You know, this is where I call it a day. But as a matter of principle, if I can't tell the difference that I'm making in a song, then it shouldn't be there. It's a waste of processing power. It's a waste of time. And it's an arrogance on my part to think I can blindly add stuff to a song and improve it. That's just silly. Take it away. And you can see I've done exactly the same test here. Get my mouse in the right place. Toggle the effect on and off. And let's listen. So obviously better. That's clearly, clearly better. Okay, that's on and it's good. Okay. And in fact, the output on this particular case um, is very slightly quieter with the compressor on. So that was interesting. Well, let's have a look at the 1176. Same kind of thing, position my mouse over the bypass effect, click it a few times so that I forget whether it's on or off. Okay, here we go. I can't hear, I can't tell whether that, that's on That's on or off, I just can't tell the difference. So I thought I'd share that with you anyway because I think it's really fascinating these self delusions that we can impose on ourselves, not going to the effort of doing the volume matching and putting a compressor on a bus and immediately thinking it's amazing because it's just arbitrarily added 3 dB of volume to the thing. Of course, it sounds better. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. Uh, check out the Patreon link in the description below or the YouTube channel member if you want to help support my channel. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.